What is up, bros? This is the All Bros Podcast. I am Jonathan. Nah, I'm Kay. Why did you do the intro <laughs> weird? Because <laughs> I for a, for a second I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> so it came out very monotone, as you know, like kind of like like a soothing podcast. That's what we've turned into. This podcast is anything but soothing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I feel um, like we get very worked up over dumb shit. Hey, but you know what? It's stuff we love, so who gives a flying shit? True that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Caleb. <laughs> and we are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we'll be talking about some Ed Funko Focus. I I stopped myself. Rose? I was about to get, come over there and slap the shit out of you. <laughs> I I straight up I I almost called you Calvers because I started saying Caleb, but then I'm like Calvers, you know yeah. <laughs> like you know, I started saying Caleb, but then I'm like, you know what? I want to say his last name, so it kind of almost came out as Calvers. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so Funko Focus, we got a uh, new uh, amount of uh, Funko Pops in a uh, Pixar line that we'll be talking about. Um, one of my favorite Pixar movies, and I'm assuming maybe it's one of Caleb's. I don't know. No. Is it? Okay. Fair. This I is actually understand. one of my least favorite. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Isn't as low as Good Dinosaur. If that makes you feel better, but it's, um, it's down if it's there. that low, damn. Yeah, it's not that low, but it's okay, it's okay. like maybe a couple movies above that. Is it higher than Brave? No. I Shit. like Brave more. Wow. Okay. You know what? It's okay. We're all friends here. I think at least. <laughs> the look on your face, not for long. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so anyway, we'll be talking about that. Um, and then for 4K Spotlight, we got two new movies coming to uh, 4K and Blu-ray. Um, one that we are actually very excited to check out, and then one that, f- for me at least, could give two shits about. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Never liked this franchise, but we'll go more into detail. Um, and then after that, we'll be going into um, Through the Wall. Um, we have uh, three trailers to talk about. Um, we have a trailer for a new Marvel show coming out in November, as well as two new video games that don't come out till 2023, which really freaking sucks. Eh, but, not for us people that have to save up for a PS5. That's true. So, <laughs> I mean, like I told Caleb, let's hope that you you know they actually have a decent amount in stock by then. If they don't, they're just doing everything wrong. Yes, they really are. <laughs> um, uh, but then after that, we'll be moving on to our All Bros headliner, uh, which will be our breakdown of the. Uh, it's I thought it was an Amazon original, but it's actually not. Um, it's just uh, it is our friend. So yeah, starring Jason Sudeikis, Casey Affleck, not Jason Sudeikis. Jason I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, so- I'm sorry. Wow, I just did this. I just did. Injustice to my favorite character in this movie. What's wrong with me? Um, starring Jason Segal, Casey Affleck, and Dakota Johnson. There we go. Got it. <laughs> I am like really starting off this episode strong, and I feel it's probably going to be downhill from here. So, guys, get ready. Those are the best episodes. It's true. Um, so, anyway, Caleb, what do you say we get started? Let's do it. Hey, guys. I'm Crash host of the podcast Crash and Taz's Movie Seller. On our show, me and my co-host pick a new movie each week and rate each movie on a few categories that we think are important to making a great movie. After we rate the movie, it gets a final rating, and that lands it somewhere on our seller scale, where it will get labeled as either a well, premium, or a top shelf film. Catch us on platforms like Spotify, Google, Amazon Music, and more. And don't forget to follow us on social media. On Instagram, as Crash and Taz's Movie Seller, it's Crash, the letter N, Taz Movie Seller, with underscores in between each word, and on Facebook, Crash and Taz Movie Seller. 
uh, where you as a listener can suggest movies for us to rate and also give us some constructive criticism to make the show more entertaining. Overall, don't forget to follow or subscribe and rate and review us and get ready for an entertaining show with us. See you guys then. All right, so first off with Funko Focus, um, Monsters, Inc. has some new Funko Pops coming to its line. Um, Got some pretty good ones. Um, If I still collected Funko Pops, uh, or at least, like, if I didn't collect, like, super, super, super specific ones, um, I would probably go out for, go for these. Um, So when it comes to just commons, uh, we have a new uh, Boo Pop. Um, This looks like the exact same as the last one. I don't really know what's different. Well, I think the last one, she wasn't smiling. Wait, really? I thought the the only other Boo Pop that I know of is um the one where she's not in that costume. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. Never mind. Take back what I said. I'm going to look it up while you're talking. Okay, cool. Um, Well, so next to her, uh, we finally have, at least I'm pretty sure this is the only Celia uh, Funko Pop we're getting um, with her classic uh, Medusa-like hair. Uh, with uh, her, like, five snake buddies hanging down. Um, and then this is the one that I would get if I still did collect uh, Funko Pops. Uh, or, like I said, I didn't collect them very specifically. It's uh, Mike Wazowski, but he's in his, like, uh, I guess, like, his, like, child protective gear. Like, he has the oven mitts on. He has his flippers, the colander, the uh, freaking... Um, Go- what is it called? Like that breathing tube that you have when you have like goggles on? Oh, a snorkel. Like snorkel, thank you. Uh, snorkel, and then he has like freaking uh, um, was it disinfectant spray. Um, <laughs> and I just love this freaking scene when he's just like, as long as it doesn't come near us, we're going to be okay. And Boo sneezes in his face and he's like, ah, ah, gets in his eye, ah, gets me every time. Freaking love this scene. <laughs> um,. <laughs> Yeah, so I just confirmed the only other Boo Pop. There's actually, I'm sorry, there's two other Boo Pops. Um, there's one where she is unhooded in her monster outfit. Okay. Then one where she's in her normal clothes. And then there was one that came in a two-pack where it was like a giant Sully and a little Boo. Isn't that one worth a shit ton of money now? Yeah. Like how much? Um, that is an excellent question. Oh, let I me, thought it was let me find you. out. <laughs> I'm scared to know. Um anyway, at the rate that they're they're going with these, the next boo pop is gonna be when it like the hood the um the helmet is actually fully closed closed and um she actually looks like a monster. Um so uh next to Mike we have a uh, Sully with with also uh going off uh the scene that Mike's in uh he has a colander colander on his head as well as a trap I'm assuming that's a trash can lid that he's holding as a shield wasn't that what it was in the movie Yeah trash can okay. lid and that I think that's a strainer on Yeah his head? I think it's either don't people call it like either a strain strainer or a colander or some shit like that i thought the colander is what mike has and then the strainer is what sully has like i yeah, thought it was just like right. the, the difference between like the size of the the holes yeah i, I don't think know. caleb's right no i think you're right dude <laughs> like that's serious <laughs> but okay so yeah so sully has a strainer on his head and he's holding a uh, trash can lid as a shield um and then next to Sully um, is uh, the Abominable Snowman with uh, Don't Worry, It's Lemon. Um, <laughs> snow cones. Uh, so that one's great. Um, and then when it comes to exclusives for these, it's literally... Well, okay, so two... <laughs> they're not lazy, but they're like... Two of them are like the exact same as the ones on like the last page, um, just different. So the Amazon exclusive is the Sol- is Sully in the exact same position, but this time he's flocked. And then the Abominable Snowman um, has a Hot Topic exclusive where he's scented. If and... it's not Lemon, I don't want it. 
I feel whoever did this Funko Pop, if he didn't make it s- smell like lemon, I don't like, you know, sp- calling people this, but I think you're stupid. Yes. <laughs> Missed like, opportunities. Tremendously. I know this isn't, like, the mo- the most popular show, so I'm not afraid of giving spoilers. Have you watched um, Monsters at Work? I've only seen, like, the first three episodes. I need to finish it. <laughs> uh, you mind if I spoil it? Spoil yeah, yeah, a- an episode? They bring yeah, Abominable go. back. <sighs> yes! Voiced by the original actor and everything. Uh, what is it, John Ratzenberger? Isn't that who played him? Uh, good question. I want to say yes. Yeah. Oh, that, ooh. Well, now I gotta go and finish it, because... Okay, speak... Okay, sorry, really quickly, with Monsters at Work. Okay, so is... Don't they bring in, like, an evil Mike? It's not blue? an evil Mike, it's his cousin, Gary. <laughs> so he's blue, right? And yeah. He's voiced by Gabriel Iglesias? Yep. How is he... He is such a small character. Like, honestly, I forgot about him until you brought him up. (laughs) Damn. Like, I was expecting so much more because, like, they made a huge deal. Like, even Gabriel made a big deal about it. Like, oh, I'm going to be on Monsters, Monsters, Inc., Monsters, Inc., and I'm like, or Monsters at Work. And I'm like, yes, like, I freaking love this. He was in one episode where he wasn't even, like, a big part of the episode. Oh, and then, so like, he was the like the protagonist in that. Like, I think there was like a a bowling thing, and so okay, it, he was only there for like the opening, and then he was there at the end for like a little bit, and then he was there for like a really quick throwaway scene, um, in a later episode, and then that was it. Dumb. That was all we got of him. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, they blew him way out of proportion. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah, it was basically just a blue mic. <laughs> uh, but well, I, they tried. Yeah, I think they tried really hard with this show, and I think it just felt flat. Yeah. Like, I mean, I haven't finished it yet, Um, but like... Which is better, Monsters University or Monsters at Work? Monsters University. Damn, that's saying a lot. I feel. <laughs> and I I'm thought actually, you liked I, Monsters. Oh yeah, University. no, I, I actually I am one of the very few people that actually love Monsters University. I like um, Monsters University more than I like Monsters Inc. You know what? Actually, I think I might agree with you. <laughs> I don't know why. I love that movie. Um. <laughs> But um, I I just didn't think that, you know, like an actual true sequel to Monsters, Inc., in a way, uh, (laughs) would be worse than the prequel that doesn't even, like, go against its own timeline, considering in Monsters, Inc., Mike clearly says that you've been jealous, he tells Sully, you've been jealous of my look since the third grade, pal. Yeah. So. I think another thing that they really dropped the ball on with Monsters at Work is that they didn't focus on Mike and Sully. Yeah, that was the big I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm I have no problems with new characters. Um like I love that they got ben, was it Ben Feldman? Was yeah. the main guy? Like the the premise for this is, like the show is good. Just don't give us don't tease us with these characters that we like cuz I'd rather see them than these new no, I, characters. Dude, like from what I've seen so far, it feels like uh John Goodman and uh Billy Crystal were like probably able to film all of their lines in a day. Easily. Yeah. But they have like a lot of stuff to do. Like they were a big part of the show, and I think that's what like <sighs> Personally, I would have, to make me care about the characters that they're going to be, like, walking through with us, to make us care about them more, I would have had Sully and Mike in the first episode, and then that was it. No, that's fair. Bring bring in, uh, bring old fans back, but also, that's a really good way to introduce a uh, new idea and hope that they stick around. Yeah, but I think it's just having Mike and Sully there really brought down the show itself. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so, oh, sorry, yeah. one more exclusive. 
Uh, so it's a Funko Shop exclusive. Big shocker here. Um, and it's uh, Sully uh, holding Boo uh, when uh, they put her in the uh, Chinese takeout box. Dude, so. same pose and everything. Like, the only thing that's it different is. is his mouth. Yeah. Like, and his, like, fingers are a little different. Like, in, like one's behind another, but that's it. Yeah, it's basically the exact same pose. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, they kind of got lazy with these exclusives, but whatever. They did. Like, I don't even know what I would have done. Yeah, dude, you got me. The only thing that I could think of is maybe having Boo on on his head, like in her costume, or on his back. You know, you know, and I know this is probably like messed up. I want a Funko Pop that has a uh, when Sully uh, thinks that Boo got crushed and she's the big pile of garbage, and just like <laughs> like a <laughs> sad, <laughs> just a depressed Funko Pop of Sully. Dude, that. that would be amazing. <laughs> oh man. Um, total side note, but just because I did look it up, that that really big Sully and the metallic Boo. It goes for nine hundred and sixty dollars. F you, <laughs> right? No Funko Pop is worth worth that. At least to me. No, not even a little bit. Anyway, Jeez Louise. Just thought I'd throw that in there before we completely moved on. No, th- th- thank you for um throwing that very. Oh my God. Jeez Louise. F you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on to 4K Spotlight. Uh, we have two uh, brand new releases coming out. Uh, first up, we got uh, Disney's Cruella, which will be getting uh, not only a 4K and Blu-ray release, but also a Best Buy exclusive steelbook and a Target exclusive Digibook. Um, I have not seen this one yet. I am very actually. I'm actually really looking forward to finally watching this movie. I am too. I haven't heard amazing things about the movie, but I mean, I'll watch anything with Emma Stone in it because she's amazing in everything she does. True. Um, so I told Caleb since it's like on Disney Plus for like all um subscribers to watch you don't have to pay extra to watch it i feel i should probably watch it first before i buy the steelbook even though that steelbook is so freaking tempting it's so beautiful um but i think i'm gonna hold out <laughs> yeah because um, i doubt i doubt it's gonna sell out because disney's really good at overproducing steelbooks um because i thought because what was it friday no thursday black widow's steelbook like went out of stock online i'm like are you freaking kidding me so it finally came up for like back up for like a second. I pre-ordered it as fast as I could. And then the day that it come came out, it finally went back into stock. And so I get it in the mail. The disc is loose. So I'm like, okay, hell no. Like there's I, I'm getting a different copy. There there's no way I'm taking a chance of my disc being scratched. Um so I go to uh so I go online to see if any stores have it in stock. Freaking uh Best Buy and American Fork like just barely put out their stock. When I went there two day to uh exchange, um they had probably like at least ten, maybe fifteen steelbooks. That's not bad. Yeah. So thankfully I was able to pick the best one, or at least I thought, um, because there is like a slight dent on the top. Um, you can't see it really, you really can't see it unless you're like shining the, the light, like hella bright at it. But um, Rose know it's, knows it's there now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I really wish I wouldn't have looked at it in the light. Cause like there's no slit on the spine. It's perfectly aligned. Uh, there's nothing on the back, no dents, no scratches. And then, yeah, when I flipped it to the front, just double check. I'm like, no, <laughs> but it's okay. You know what? The way I looked at it. My Spider-Man Far From Home um, steelbook has, like, two large, like, bullet-sized dents on the back. And those, like, you notice, like, that. Whereas this one, like I said, you really have to be freaking looking <laughs> to see that shit. That's fair, but I think it's still going to bug you. <laughs> I know. Shut up. 
Um, <laughs> and you, you know what the sad thing is? I can't like really, I can't uh, say like, oh, well, you know, like uh, usually, because usually if there's like a dent on the back, I can say, well, the J card was covering it up, so I couldn't have seen it. No, if I would have shined it a little more in the light at the store, I could have probably seen that considering it's on the front. God Dude, damn, do you Jonathan. bring a light or do Why you not? like just use your phone flashlight? I don't use any of those. I'm not that bad. <laughs> like, how do you know? Or you don't take a light to the thing before you you buy it? Uh, no, because I feel I would get some weird ass looks if I did that. Uh, sir, is there anything I can help you with? No, just making sure there's no dents, no spine slits. Carry on. <laughs> Excellent work, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks for having this fully stocked for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> or just the opposite. There is like a bunch of dents in the majority of them. And it's just like, I'm disappointed in you guys. <laughs> Do better Do like and then walk out. <laughs> oh, man. One of the guys that I watch on YouTube, um, like when he went to go get his copy, um, freaking all the ones that they had up front, all the discs were loose. So he's just like, oh, my soul is crushed, but, like, I kind of have to have it. So he, he was going to buy one with a loose disc, but thankfully he went to the back, and there were ones without loose disc. But, yeah, like, I mean, I know it's, like, 4K and Blu-ray disc, but I'm sorry. I don't like to take a chance. Dude, that's loose disc. that's really risky. Like, I know that, at least with Blu-ray movies, they have less of a, like, they're harder to scratch. Yeah, it's nothing like a DVD. Yeah, but still, like, you don't want to mess around with that shit. Like, I I think especially kids like us, (laughs) like, what are we? We're like young millennials, right? I think so. Pretty sure that's what we're considered. Yeah. So us, like, we were were still raised on on old... Like actually, I was raised on on VHS for the longest time, and then slowly transitioned to to DVD when when Blu-ray was like the big ticket item. <laughs> but real? Oh, dude, that sucks. Yeah. Well, it, we never had a TV where it would have made a difference. Okay. That, okay. Fair enough. Um. But. But yeah, like I was raised in a time where the. There, like with it just being DVDs, yeah, it was so easy to scratch the DVDs. It was, and like I know they had those like DVD uh, scratch cleaners, but half the time those bitches didn't even work. No, they didn't. Like they rarely ever worked. Like I think that that might be a big reason why I'm on. I'm a big fan of the um, the digital movies see i can completely understand that yeah because it's like as time goes on like with dv like with me it was like when dvds were a big ticket item i was watching vhs so i always kind of felt like left out and then when we transitioned when my family transitioned into dvds everyone was watching blu-ray on like their high quality tv and i think just having the the digital copy is really nice because movies that that were only standard definition when you gave them to me, I now have an HD version of them completely free. See? Hell yeah. So it's like Whereas I have to pay another extra twenty five dollars to get that extra HD version. <laughs> Yeah, and it it does. I will say this: it does suck that I have to rely on a decent Wi-Fi connection. But yeah, that's that, fair. I feel like that's a very small price to pay for no, really good that, quality stuff. No, that that that's absolutely fair. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Yeah, so I mean, dude, if it makes you feel any better, I still haven't even. I don't even have a 4K player yet. I'm still playing Blu-ray. <laughs> I'm kind of just honestly waiting until I get a PS5. Yeah. It's not like Blu-ray's going anywhere anytime soon. All combo packs always come with 4K plus Blu-ray. It's very rare that it's just com- that it just comes with the 4K. Yeah, it's true. And I don't ha- I don't have a 4K TV either. It's just they I feel like they're like really expensive. 
They are, and unless you have a 4K player, it really doesn't change that much. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know that, like, Xbox has a 4K feature. Um, like, if you have a 4K TV. But, like, my youngest, or one of my, not my youngest, my younger brother, Koi, he bought a, a 4K TV. But it was only, like, one of those super small 23-inch TVs. <laughs> Oh, see, like, you barely even see any 4K with that. Yeah, like... So bad for Koi. I know. When I when I buy a freaking 4K TV, I want it to be massive. Oh, yeah, I bought a... Uh, I'm not going to lie, I did buy a 50-inch 4K TV. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing penny? wrong with yes. that. Like, it needs to be big. Yeah. Like, yeah. It it just needs to be big. So and you probably thought I was gonna say that's what she said, but I did not. I resisted. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. It's still out there now. I'm still proud of myself. Anyway, I'm done bitching um, about 4K <laughs> being <laughs> poor. I'm I'm done bitching about uh, dents on my steel books that are barely even noticeable. <laughs> No, you're not. Don't lie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I just think that's funny because, like, uh, the Zack Snyder Justice League steelbook came pristine. There is not one dent nor scratch in sight on that thing. That's impressive, though. I mean, I'm happy about that because have you seen how much that thing is going for now? Considering you can't get it anywhere. No. Uh, <laughs> about a hundred bucks or more. Holy shit! For like the best spot, if you want to get like the overseas UK version, probably about like forty to fifty. But if you want to get like the actual one that says Best Buy exclusive, yeah, you're gonna be paying close to a hundred bucks. Holy shit! Yeah, so I really lucked out pre-ordering that one, and I'm very happy. Yeah, that's that's really good. <laughs> um, and then the next uh big release of this week is uh, Fast and Furious 9, which I don't know about Caleb, but I could give two shits about this franchise. I've only seen one. I've seen Fast and Furi- uh, Too Fast, Too Furious. Didn't really intrigue me that much. Um, and just, I don't know, Like I feel the series has done all it can. It's been done to death, and I swear if I hear Dom Toretto talk one more time about family, <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. Oh my gosh, dude, those franchises, or that entire franchise is so dumb. They just get more and more ridiculous. You know what what Fast 9 turned into? It turned into Jason Goes to Space. (laughs) It did. That's what Brielle told me. They actually ended up going to space in this movie. So Jason X, that's what it turned into. Yeah, if Fast 10, they're, they're probably going to go to hell. (laughs) <laughs> Dom's gonna be like I gotta save my family in hell I gotta make sure that they make it to heaven Even if I have to fight save myself <laughs> oh, the That was the Vin worst Diesel. Vin Diesel I know it was impression ever. <laughs> I, I couldn't do a good Vin Diesel <laughs> Yeah it's just ugh. It's so dumb Um but if you guys are interested and, um, you know, you guys actually like your, this franchise, you know, like, kudos to you if you guys like this franchise. This is not for us. Um, it will be getting a, uh, what is it? A Target exclusive. I think it's a Digibook. I want to double check on that because it's getting a Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. Shocker. Um, Oh, okay, so it's not a Digibook at Target. It's um it includes ten collectible character art cards. Whoop de doo. <laughs> That's all I gotta say to that. Um I will give them this though. I appreciate them keeping when it comes to the steelbook, I appreciate them keeping in uh the line of how the other steelbooks have came. Like it looks exactly the same. Um, same layout. So if you guys have Fast 1 through 9, um, all your steelbooks are going to line up like so well. And um, like I really appreciate them keeping with this. And I hope that 
for anyone that does collect these that they keep it through this way till fast 11 i think that's supposed to be the last one um oh my hell just end the series <laughs> no man they can't I hate it makes everything. too much money for universal <laughs> Dude, the damn series got a freaking ride at Universal. You know this uh, franchise makes money. Uh. Um, but yeah, so besides that, actually, there are like two like uh, re 4K releases. Well, like the first time on 4K, and that's going to be um, oh my goodness, uh, M Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable. So that's his first in the in his trilogy. Um, I th yeah, so it was, so it goes Unbreakable, then Split, then Glass, so that's the first one, and then that, that is also getting a Best Buy exclusive Steelbook, and then, um, I can't, I can't believe this is actually finally getting a 4K K release, uh, a Clockwork Orange. Jeez. Yeah. I've always wanted to check that movie out, I never did. Um, I just might pick up this Steelbook, um... Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that the steelbook design is not the um, the regular 4K design, and then the 4K design is the steelbook design, because I would have preferred that. I think it would have just made a lot more sense. Um, I'll send this to you after we're done, Caleb, and I want to get your opinion. Um, but, yeah, that's, that, that's it for... Uh, 4k spotlight uh this coming week so if you guys want to pick up any of those there are your options um moving on to through the wall we got three new trailers to talk about um caleb which one would you want to start with first i'm gonna talk i think we should start with the ones that we have the least amount to say and that's okay. the ps5 games coming out okay sounds good to me um, do you want to start with Wolverine or Spider-Man 2? Let's go with Wolverine. I feel like that one is, the, at least for me, is the most intriguing of the two. But we barely got any information about this game, other than it's coming out. Yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, the trailer for this game, it just kind of goes through a bar where some people got like completely wrecked and then it kind of pans over to a shot of logan sitting at the bar and he's like in a flannel jacket and he's wearing like a, a cowboy hat um or like not a cat like a straw hat and yeah and then he it cuts to a, a shot of his hands and then his blades come out um so all we know really is that there's a Wolverine game coming out. It is being uh, created by Insomniac, which is exciting because they are the yes. ones that made the Spider-Man PS4 game. Um, so you can Miles imagine Morales it's going to be one. open world. Yeah. Um, if it's not open world and it's like a story-based game, that's going to be even better. <laughs> I'm wondering if that might be the direction they go because, I mean, with Spider-Man, it's like a no-brainer to make that open world because, you know, he's the protector of New York City. Um, but I don't really know where you can make Logan's uh, open world. What do you think? That would be a really tough one just because he's always in, like, a wilderness setting. And yeah, it seems like this is the case, too. Like, he could be in the middle of Alaska, for all we know. And I think... I just don't think it would track well for a character like Logan. Yeah, that that's that's like if I'm you thinking. do have an open world, you have to assume to get around fast, he has to take a car or ride a motorcycle or freaking bugs um or do something along those lines. And that just gives me way too many Grand Theft Auto vibes. That's fair. That's um, absolutely fair. Unless this is something where it's more f following his story with like the X Men, which would be really cool. And then you have like the X Jet that you could go explore and the X Mansion. Like we we have like no information about this game at all. No, 
whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. So really what I'm hoping this game ends up being is a story-based level game where it is like a kind of a free roam of whatever the level's map is. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously that's not going to be like full open world, but, uh, like I, I wanted to have like super good combat and I want the story to be kind of following like his biggest comic storylines. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. Like, I think that'd be like, that'd be super cool. And if it's Insomniac, maybe a cameo from Spider-Man, that'd be freaking dope. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm hoping it is. Like, I hope that they do the big fight between him and Hulk. I think that would be super cool to do. Oh, that'd be bitching. And then just some other, um, Wolverine stories. Yeah, that'd be super cool. I mean, like you said, uh, they didn't really give away like anything. Um, but considering this is on Somniac, I have nothing but faith in this project. I have a feeling this is going to be fantastic. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing else to say. Like we said, the trailer barely gives anything away. Um, but definitely go check out the trailer. It's still really, really good. Um, but uh, moving on to uh, the other PS5 uh, trailer that we got, uh, we got the announcement for Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man Two, oh, which I am I'm God. now renaming Spider-Man PS5. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that works. I like it. Okay, so Spider-Man PS5, um, what a trailer! We get amazing shots of Peter and Miles working together, kicking some ass. Freaking Peter has the spider tentacles come out of his suit. It's amazing. Oh, I love this trailer so much. And then um, the trailer ends in, like, honestly, one of the best ways I think you could ever announce a video game. And um, we get introduced that Venom is going to be in the sequel. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was kind of narrate like I feel like it wasn't confirmed who it was narrated by, but I think we can both assume that it was Craven. Yeah, dude, that's what my buddy JC said too. So, yeah, I'm that, pretty sure it's Craven. That's just like that's just his staple accent. Yeah, no, it like I can't think of any other at least like Spider-Man villain that that voice could work with besides Craven. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we know we're going to get Craven in this and we know we're going to get Venom and Venom looks awesome. Oh, he does. Like oh, we always saw so... was his face, but he looks freaking epic. Have they said if he's going to have the white symbol on his chest or not? I would assume so. Like they have okay. to kind of, they, I feel like they have to differentiate him from the, uh, the other past, uh, that... Venoms. That's true. Yeah, they got to be a little different from Tom Hardy's Venom. Um, yeah. And I think, like, without that symbol, like, it just kind of makes him like any other symbiote. That's true. So, you know this game is going to be freaking badass. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um. So, a lot of people have, like, speculated that since it looks like... Um, it's going to be a lot of uh, Miles and Peter working together. Um, do you think that they're going to make it multiplayer? Or do you think maybe it's just going to be like in certain uh, like spots you have like you can have like team up moves or some stuff like that? Ooh. I, I have a feeling it's going to be like. Um, oh, you don't play Assassin's Creed, but there's a, uh, an Assassin's Creed. I want to say it's called it's Syndicate. Okay. Um, it is. You can switch between characters, so oh, they okay. have um they have some levels where you have to play as like the brother. Some levels you have to play as the sister, and then they have levels that you can play as either or. I have oh, a okay. feeling that's what it's going to be like. Like, there's going to be some Miles levels. There's going to be some Peter levels, and then 
the rest of, or the rest of the levels are going to be like oh you can pick and choose who you want to be so kind of so in a way kind of like how the first spider-man game was but better nothing against those mj and you know miles before he got his or technically before he came out with his powers um but those weren't always the funnest no they were not um i really liked the the uh the mj mission where she's in the train station and you're kind of like controlling what spider-man does okay yeah that was cool that was yeah that was super fun but yeah some of the uh the miles levels were rough (laughs) so hopefully insomniac uh listen to the fans when it came to that because i know we're not the only ones that weren't the biggest fans of those types of missions yeah, I think um, they were good storytelling missions. They just weren't very fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I I can definitely agree with that because I'll I'll admit like every single time I like got caught, I was like son of a bitch, <laughs> almost threw my remote <laughs> on the floor. It was uh, just that he couldn't run. Like <laughs> you freaking make him run. Yeah, like that uh, would have improved the the levels drastically. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, so I have I have very high hopes for this game. Oh yeah, um, same. The one th- aspect of this game that I'm a little concerned about is the free roaming. Like, are they? It's just go- I feel it's going to be a little funky with swinging through New York City again. Uh, that's okay, that's fair. Like I um, I I want to know what what's something new they're going to add to the web swinging. Yeah, cuz I mean, I know with like the Miles Morales Spider-Man game, the the change that they made with that is they made it uh take place during Christmas time. So you have to see New York during Christmas, it snowed, all that fun stuff. So that's a cool change, but of course they can't do that again for uh, Spider-Man, uh, PS5. Um, so, yeah, I really don't know what they can do. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. And it, whether it's like a new web swinging feature or something. Like, it, I think they just need to change something about it to bring a new new wind to it. Yeah, no, I no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and if they don't, they need to add something else to the game. Yeah. Whether it be um, more combat missions, new web gadgets, or something along those lines. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited. Oh yeah, me too. I'm freaking stoked for this game. But since we don't compare apples and oranges, out of the two, which one are you more excited for? Uh, Spider-Man. Sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards Wolverine just because oh. it's something we haven't seen before. See, that's fair. That's completely fair. I mean, I know that there are Wolverine games out there, um, but with this coming from Insomniac, so so close to Spider-Man PS4 or PS5. PS5. <laughs> and you already ruined your own uh, renaming. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for Wolverine. I think it'll be be a good time. Oh yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Um, well, uh, unless you have anything else to say, not with those two. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to I feel the bi- or I feel the big trailer of the week that dropped Monday. We got our first trailer for Hawkeye. Oh my god, um, <laughs> freaking Vic, uh. This is why I freaking love, I I love having a podcast and like being, I mean, I knew Vic before we started this, but I feel, um, since we've started a podcast, like I've gotten to know Vic more and more and I freaking love it. Like I consider him a really good friend now. Um, I love that he texts me Tuesday morning and he's just like, you okay, Rose? I haven't heard from you recently. You okay after that Hawkeye trailer? (laughs) And he sends like, because me, Caleb and Vic are on a group chat and he sends the freaking gif from South Park when, um, I don't know who the hell it is after he's freaking like ejaculated and it's freaking everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, uh, and the freaking uh, freaking Caleb comes in. You know what? Uh, drink some Gatorade, Rose. That that will definitely help. So the, the, these two really helped me. They, they really helped me get through the uh, excitement that I went through after watching this trailer so many times. I can't even count how many times I've watched this trailer. Dude, it is a bitchin' trailer. And I need... I, I know that we chat on Messenger, but I, I we need to switch to messages because I put... Or I'm... I have a group chat like with my text messaging with yeah. with Vic and DJ and they both like asked me like hey is Rose okay and I'm like <laughs> I'm like I have no idea and then Vic was just like this is basically Rose right now and it was that picture of Deadpool being like sniffing his guns and being like ah I'm touching myself tonight <laughs> <laughs> yes yes I love it Oh man, <laughs> dude, this trailer was awesome and so unexpected too. Yeah, like um, what was it? Jeremy Renner uh, posted on his Instagram Monday night. Uh, trailer drops tomorrow. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that same reaction. I said it the exact same. Dude, I didn't even get that. Like, I just I came home from work and like I was eating lunch and I like turn on YouTube to watch something while I ate and then I saw the Hawkeye trailer and I almost like choked on my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my gosh, such a so good. Seriously, and so, this is only the first trailer. Yeah. Do, but like there were so many things that I'm like super hyped for. First off, this is like a holiday movie which kind of gives me some die hard vibes. <laughs> That's what everyone's saying, and you know what? For Hawkeye, it works, especially considering they're basing this off the Matt Fraction comics. Yeah. Another really good thing that you can see uh, hearing aids in, yes, in yeah. his Jeremy Renner's ears. Yeah. So which that's is an awesome nod. Awesome and then for some reason, it looked like Haley Steinfeld or Kate Bishop is uh, kind of was trying to take over the, the role of. Uh, Ronan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's really funny is when like they before Jeremy Renner like catches her and like takes off the hood, they show like a shot of like her looking at like the bad guys. And I'm sorry, you can't you can there's no denying that's Haley Steinfeld. I feel when Jeremy Renner wore it, like you could like say, Okay, that looks like Clint, but like not you can totally tell that that's Kate, even though it's a mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she, she just has a very distinctive face. I think it's the eyes. The eyes. Yeah, for me, I th just I don't know. Haley Steinfeld's eyes are like really recognizable. I mean, it's probably because I have like one of the biggest like when it comes to celebrity crushes, she's like at the top for me. Like, <laughs> I don't wow. blame you one bit. She's hot. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's <laughs> gorgeous. Um, so uh, her eyes, uh, just like are very vibrant uh to me so maybe vic wasn't that far off about you <laughs> uh, but yeah i guess so yeah <laughs> oh my gosh oh, man. dude i um, loved how they with this like with what they did with this uh how they made um things just kind of not go right for for hawkeye <laughs> Yeah, poor Clint. Like just just these like random things and it's like the uh my favorite scene is when he's talking to I'm assuming he's talking to to Laura but then or maybe his daughter or some like she wasn't in this. Was his wife? He, no, she wasn't. Um and so like many people are wondering like did uh um Linda Cardellini not want to come back? Um which I don't, I'd be very shocked. I mean, I thought she she's said before that she loves playing uh, Hawkeye's wife. Hmm. Maybe like a scheduling conflict or something. That's what I'm thinking. Or like maybe just because uh, when they were filming this, like I mean, COVID is still a big thing, of course, with the Delta variant. Um, but I she might have been not wanting to take the chance, even though I know, like, of course, they were taking the precautions, but she still just didn't want to chance it. I'm assuming maybe. That's fair. Yeah. 
it just felt like he was talking to his daughter for a majority of the movie. Or the, the only movie, p- majority of the sh- uh, the trailer. The trailer. I mean, it did, I, the only part that like I'm I'm assuming uh, he's talking to his wife, um, unless he calls his daughter babe. I don't know. Um, but there is a part where uh, he's just like like uh, it's him and uh, Kate and uh, I'm assuming it's pr- might be Kate's apartment. Um, and he's just like, hey babe, I'll be uh, I should be home in like a day or two. And then one of the cool scenes is just like, hey, hold on a second. He punches a window out, grabs a Molotov cocktail that one of the uh, goons throws it, throws through the window, and then just throws it back at them. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I love it, dude. This, ah, oh, this this show is going to be epic. It, oh, it is. Just like, like everything, like I love the um, the suit that Kate Bishop is wearing. Like yeah, even, it's just like a basic reason. purple jacket, but it yeah, it just fits so well. The behind the scenes shots, I don't know why, like kind of made the suit look not so great, but in motion, it looks fantastic. I love it. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with you on that one. Um, I love that this is just like one of the. It just seems like there's nothing that's going to go right in this. Like no, <laughs> the 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 freaking epic entrance that Kate Bishop was hoping to have, but she just like collapses in front of Clint, and he just kind of like rolls his eyes and just yeah. Like I feel like we're gonna get a lot of just like oh come on, oh yeah I agree and that's I feel that's perfect for uh, Hawkeye. Um, yeah, like it's just it's I I think it'll be refreshing seeing a character where everything's just kind of worked out for him. It's it's true, and where he's just like cool, calm, and just like he's just the guy that everything kind of just goes right for. Like obviously, yeah. there were some instances where it didn't really end up working out for him, like when he got thrown in jail in Civil War, or you know his family got snapped away. <laughs> yeah, but like everything else, like it just. What he was going for, it's just like, just like super calm, like super chill. Yeah. And this just seems like he's trying to keep that going, but it's just not working out. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I am super excited for this, sh- Dude, this show. Dude, I'm. T- my favorite part of this whole trailer is when they're uh, driving in the car trying to escape from I don't know who. But uh, freaking Clint's just like gl- glowing through all of his arrows. He's just like, uh, that one's too dangerous. Definitely not this one. And I love how Kate's just like, you don't have to say definitely like that. And then she freaking <laughs> shoots. <laughs> she shoot. She shoots. She she uh, you know, comes out the sunroof, shoots the van, and blows up. And she's just like, there are more. There are uh, arrows more dangerous than that one. And Clint g- just gives like a smirk, like, uh, yeah, you kind of haven't seen anything yet, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you can tell that their chemistry is so amazing in this. Yeah, uh, it's just like the comics, and I love it so much. Oh, I- I'm so, so grateful that Haley Steinfeld was cast as Kate Bishop. To me, no one else can play this role than her. She she is going to be the perfect Kate Bishop. Yeah. I mean, and, we, and we already know Jeremy Renner's the perfect Clint Barton, so you know that's already been proven. <laughs> yeah dude one thing that came out of this trailer that i'm really excited for is rogers the musical <laughs> <laughs> can that just be like a disney plus extra like, dude can we actually get i rogers would love the that <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing that would be so cool <laughs> Oh my oh. gosh, especially if we get like a good portion of it. It's just like just write the rest of it. Like just yeah. do it. <laughs> like that would just be like such an out like what's the word? Like out there like Disney Plus edition that like people kind of have to see what it is. I yeah, feel. it's true. Like come on, you can't tease us with an like with a Rogers musical and not <laughs> show us more yeah exactly <laughs> someone actually brought up a good point um they're wondering if like like all of those banners like the post like the giant poster and all those banners were added in a 
post uh, because uh, they probably didn't want anyone to actually see that when they were filming in New York City. I could. What I could do you see think? that happening. It, I could too. I mean, if that's the case, uh, they could have fooled me because those really did look like they were there. It didn't look CGI to me at all. Yeah. And you know some dipshit would have freaking spoiled it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to love people in this world. Yeah. So, if anything comes out of this trailer, I hope the Rogers musical <laughs> happens for real. <laughs> Caleb's kind of put like Hawkeye to like the the back or like le- like his second like looking forward to with this trailer. It's more so now Rogers the musical. Clint and Kate have kind of been pushed to the side for a minute. <laughs> yeah, just for a minute. <laughs> but I am very excited for this the series. Uh, uh, can November twenty fourth be here already, or is it November twenty fifth? I can't remember. Dude, what? I... That's another thing I'm I'm interested in in discussing isn't miss marvel supposed to come out this year uh i don't know that's the like it seems like it's not going to happen the more closer we get to the end of the year yeah because i mean unless they have two marvel shows going at one time but i mean that would be a first because they haven't done that yet but even if you like i was thinking for a second because this is supposed to have six episodes Mm-hmm. If it takes so, like, place like the ass end of November, unless they release the oh no, and I unless yeah, unless they release the first two episodes, and then give us three, four, five, and six, then that would put us at the end of December. Three, four, five. Wait, so you said uh, six episodes, right? Yes. So if they do six episodes. It wouldn't finish until the 29th. December 29th. So would the 29th be the would be the last. Yeah. Yeah, so unless they seriously released Ms. Marvel on your birthday, <laughs> there's no way in hell that we're getting Ms. Marvel this year. Yeah, unless they I release know, um... two unless they have like a week or two where we have double yeah, I don't. I just don't know if Disney wants to do that. Um, like take uh attention away from either show. Um, and I know like they're strict. They're um strictly uh sticking with uh Disney Plus originals premiering new episodes on Wednesdays. That's the new norm for them. I don't hate that because I have Wednesdays off now. <laughs> yeah, I I don't either. Um, because I mean honestly, like that kind of like works out perfectly. Because like if. I mean, if we ever do get to the point where we want to, like, discuss these episodes, like, any episode from any show, um, like, literally, me and Caleb can watch, like, the episode, like, right before we start filming on a Wednesday, and then talk about it if we wanted to. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Anyway, ex- I'm I'm going to assume that you're at a 10 with excitement level. Damn right. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty up there, too. I'm, like, an 8. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm at a nine for the Rogers musical, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'll, I'll give I'll you know what? I'll be at a nine for that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Um, all right. So uh, unless you want to talk about anything else with these trailers, uh, what do you say we move on to our headliner of the evening? Let's do it. Alright, so uh, for this week's headliner, uh, we'll be talking about uh, the uh, film starring uh, Jason Segal, Dakota Johnson, and Casey Affleck, uh, which is Our Friend. Um, if you guys want to watch this movie, it is available or it's uh, available to watch right now on uh, Prime Video. Um, what I hate about this movie, this is the only thing I hate about this movie, spoiler alert, is this did not get a Blu-ray release. It only got a DVD release. So if I want to buy this movie physical, I have to buy the DVD. I'm kind of pissed off. 
it's going to get a Blu-ray release one day. I I hope so, even though, you know what sucks? This is considered a box office bomb. What? Yeah, dude. Oh, I mean, I can understand why you should see how much, unfortunately, the box office was, which kills me. Um, When did this, this movie got released 2020, didn't it? Uh, oh yeah, shit, it did. That's why. Okay, yeah, so it initially appeared, premiered at the uh, TIFF Film Festival September 6, 2019, but it didn't have its actual widespread release in the U.S. until January 22nd of this year, and with a budget of $10 million, it unfortunately only made $699,452. That is absolute horse shit. It is. Like, I feel you can't really bank or you can't really judge that movie, this movie for that, because people were still people are still uh, fearful of going in, going to the theaters. Yeah, this. This is going to be a big spoiler for this, this, <laughs> this breakdown. Yeah, but this was an incredible movie. Yes. One that um, took me and you by surprise. Yeah. Um this is definitely a uh, not like um, you know, like laugh laugh a minute um what's the word? Like feel good kind of movie? No, this is a I mean, I guess it can make you I don't know if I would say it's a feel good movie. Um it is a so- punch you in the gut with the realities of life kind yeah of movie. <laughs> straight up so if you don't want to ball your eyes out um maybe don't watch this movie but at the same time i want to recommend this movie to anyone that i can because this movie is remarkable yeah i absolutely agree with you um i no joke. I started crying <laughs> the s- exactly six minutes into the movie, and that was like, and that's less than five minutes into the overall film because the intro was like freaking ridiculously long. Yeah, but once it got into the movie, it was like less than five minutes, and it already got me tearing up. And this movie got me to ugly cry, which I don't think a movie has ever been able to to do to me. Including, I am including Avengers Endgame. I, for Caleb, that's saying a lot. Yeah, um, like, okay. With Avengers Endgame, I did tear up. I did have tears running down my face, but I did, was not, like, ugly crying. This movie got me ugly crying. <laughs> <laughs> same, do, same here it has been a while since i've had to wipe my tears away that much in a movie that dude literally for like i was like the same with you like six minutes in for how much i was crying i'm just like you know what since i'm watching this on my phone screw my glasses i'm just gonna leave them off and you know <laughs> it's i i already know it's just gonna get worse like what's the point oh my gosh yeah and I was already an emotional wreck before I started the I'm movie. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but, yeah, oh my gosh. It hits you in the feels. So, really if you have not seen this movie, do not, don't listen to this breakdown. Go yeah. watch the movie first. Come back and hear our review. But don't, don't, don't ruin it. Yeah. <laughs> Experience this wonderful film, please. Yeah, please. Um, but that being said, if you are new to our breakdown system. <laughs> I was like, can we move on to that before I start tearing up? <laughs> Just talking about it. Yeah. Um, if you're new to our breakdown system, we have split movies into eight different categories that we individually score to come to a final All Bros letter grade. Uh, the eight categories that we score are story, writing, acting, character development, effects, music, costumes, and then we give our own personal grade at the very end. Then all of that math gets added up, thrown into our magic algorithm, and it gives us our own our our uh, score, our final score. Well, which we'll discuss at the end. 
Um, so, without further ado, Rose is about to spoil the entire damn movie for you. Um, by reading off the synopsis, reading with Rose. Yes. Uh, so, hold on to your, your hats, ladies and gentlemen, it is a ride. <laughs> I already know one part I'm going to screw up. Dane's last name. I don't even, I'm, I didn't even know he had a last name. <laughs> I didn't either, so... This is going to be fun. All right. In the winter of 2013, Matt and Nicole Teague prepare to tell their daughters, Molly and Evie, that Nicole's ovarian cancer is terminal. Outside, their best friend, Dane Faustchex, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I feel bad for not knowing how to pronounce it. But Dane Faustchex keeps the children company. In a flashback to 2000, Matt, a journalist, and Nicole, a theater performer, live in New Orleans. She introduces Matt to Dane, a friend from college working as a camera operator who dreams of becoming a stand-up comic. The three become close over the years. In 2008, Matt and Nicole reside in Fairhope with their daughters. Matt works as a war correspondent and spends months overseas putting a strain on the family. Meanwhile, Dane remains in New Orleans working dead-end jobs. On Thanksgiving, Dane, unhappy with his life, decides to backpack at the Grand Canyon without telling anyone where he is going. Another backpacker recognizes his potential suicidal behavior and offers support. Her gesture of kindness, plus an unexpected voicemail from the Teague family, renews Dane's will to live. Okay, goddammit. Okay, give me a minute. Sorry. Um, in 2010, Matt discovers that Nicole had an affair. With Dane's help, they reconcile their relationship. Dane returns home where he works as a manager at a sporting goods store and begins dating a woman named Kat. In September 2012, Nicole receives her diagnosis and begins to undergo chemotherapy. Recognizing their need for help, Dane offers to stay with them for a few weeks. However, as Nicole's condition worsens, Dane decides to remain with them, taking on many household duties. Kat struggles to understand Dane's loyalty to the Teague family after weeks turn into months and they break up. On Christmas, Nicole ruptures her abdomen, and Dane is left to watch over the girls. Following her surgery, the doctor reveals to Matt that Nicole's cancer has spread and gives her approximately six months to live. Nicole decides that she does not want to tell their daughters until her quality of life declines significantly. Nicole prepares a bucket list which Matt and Dane help her accomplish, such as sitting as Grand Marshal of the Mardi Gras Parade, swimming in a historic fountain with all of her friends, and writing letters to her, daughter for to her daughters for future life events. As 2013 closes and Nicole becomes sicker, they decide to tell their daughters and Dane listens on, Dane listens on in sorrow as the girls cry. By the summer of 2014, Nicole becomes increasingly irritable, hallucinates, and experiences pain. Realizing that Matt is overwhelmed, Dane takes him hiking. Upon their return, Matt realizes that they are no longer equipped to care for Nicole, so he calls a hospice nurse, Faith Pruitt. Nicole's friends and family visit with her one last time. One night, Faith alerts them of Nicole's slowing heart rate, and they take her to the beach to watch one final sunrise. Returning home, Nicole dies with Matt and Dane at her side. Following Nicole's funeral, Dane confines himself to his room and grieves alone. Matt writes an article called The Friend, which he gives to Dane. Dane finally decides to go home after putting his life on hold to live with the Teague family for over 14 months. Matt embraces Dane, expressing that simply saying thank you isn't enough. In the epilogue, it is revealed that Matt's article won an award in Esquire magazine and that he and his daughters remain in Fairhope. Dane remains close to the Teague family and married in 2019. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you so, guys already saw. I had to take a minute uh, when I was reading that spe about a specific part because, yeah, I just I started tearing up. Yeah. So the synopsis is a little bit deceiving it does not so the movie isn't as a to b as that was um yes it starts it does off, do a lot of jumping around yes it does a lot which, of that which i was okay with i agree so this is kind of the the situation that i feel we had with um with shang chi last week 
um, we had a lot of giving us like this, uh, taking us from point A to point B while giving us some good, um, giving us the the backstory as we went along to from when it was important to to know. Yes. Um like for example, they there was like this whole thing where um uh Matt and Dane were talking and he's just like, "Whoa, wait, do her parents know about the affair?" And then they did like a cut scene back where he Matt is like learns about the affair. Um so for like a good portion of the movie, we think that the affair was Matt, or at least I thought it was Matt. No, I did too. But then it just kind of goes to show that it was um. Oh shit! What was her name? Uh, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah, that it was Nicole. What that was the one that had the, the affair, and that they were able to, work through it and and all that. So uh, it, I loved like that, and so it's just something that I really like. I said with Shang Chi, I really appreciated that storytelling, and this just like took that and I feel amplified it. Yeah, because I mean, you never feel lost for how much it jumps around because it it will clearly say like the month and the year, and then it will also actually say like you know like two years before diagnosis. You know, like it really points you in the direction that they want you to um see the story from. So you. You you never, at least to me, you never feel uh like the story is uh like jumping around too much that you're getting confused. Yeah, and something that really like drew me towards this movie because we have to give credit where credits due. Brielle was the one that recommended this movie to us. She did. Thank you, Brielle. And she. She like she showed me the trailer for it, and just from the trailer alone, I was just like, "That feels exactly like me and Rose." And so when I was watching yeah. it, I was kind of watching it from that perspective, which I think is why I started ugly crying. <laughs> yeah, same here. And what's interesting is like, um, like uh, this storyline, like, uh, is like kind of the way the the friendship started is like opposite from ours, but like it still works. Like. I met Caleb first, became good friends with him, and then I met Brielle when uh, they got together, and then I became good friends with her. Whereas with this movie, Dane meets Nicole first, they become good friends, and then as Nicole starts to date, um, oh my god, what is his name? Matt. Um, uh, Dane and Matt become close friends as well. Well, Matt, or, they were actually married already. Oh yeah, that's true. And then oh, yeah, Dane, Dane, and then uh, Dane asked, asked her out. out. Yep, <laughs> that's got. Ooh, that's got. It's like, hey, you know, like flashing your uh, wedding ring. I'm married. Is I would feel honestly like so stupid. I don't know if I would say. I mean, would you feel stupid if you didn't notice them wearing wearing a wedding ring? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. I'm not the only one here. <laughs> but I, uh, I loved that. Like. What kind of once once Matt's and Dane's friendship took off, that's kind of when it started feeling like us. Yeah, no, because they're honestly assholes to each other in a good way as much as we are to each other. Yeah, one of the scenes that I really appreciated. Um, so Matt go like he was kind of like a what was a war journalist or something like that. Uh, yes. Yeah, so he's off doing his own thing, and he comes back home, and he's home for, like, four days, and then he has to take off to Libya, and he's kind of comes home with, like, a really negative attitude, and starts, like, getting on his kids and scolding them, and basically just having, like, a real nasty attitude, and Dane pulls him aside, and he's just like, dude, you're being a real prick. <laughs> And telling him like, oh, "Hey, you sh- you shouldn't take that job. Yeah. Like you you need to be here with your family." And 
basically just calling him out on his shit and like that's where i felt i'm like that's that's i feel like that's me and rose like we're it, able it to is. call each other out on our shit i mean what's what's crazy about that um scene um is that uh the when they're you know like doing the name calling um the FUs, like, they start as, like, joking, but then once they get to the end of the conversation, like, they actually, you know, they do kind of mean it, just because of how uh, Matt is really not taking Dane seriously, and he's kind of kind of pissed about that. Um, so, like, the final, I can't remember who said the final FU. Um, I think it was Dane. Okay. Um, that one definitely felt, like, genuine, not not jokingly. Yeah. Which, I luckily for us, I don't. I don't feel like we've ever gotten to that point. <laughs> no, we haven't, and uh, I mean, I really hope we never do. <laughs> no, I doubt I don't it. Think like, we I will. feel like both of us were really open to taking criticisms like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like especially when it comes to to that kind of shit, where it's just like, oh, you've had like a real. You're being a real bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, thankfully, neither of us have been that. Or at least I don't think. I mean, I know I Caleb hasn't. I, I think you've know. called me out a couple times. I have? Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, and it, it, it is very humbling to hear that from your your best friend. <laughs> and it's kind of like you don't want to hear. It's kind of like, like when... Yeah, when I heard it from... From you, it was kind of like hearing it from my brother. Yeah. And my when I hear shit like that from my brother being like, you're being a real asshole, I'm like, screw you, man. <laughs> like, your first instinct is just to go and attack. And I I feel, I, I think we weren't quite at that bro point yet when you called me out. And I think that's just something that elevated us to that point a lot faster. Mm-hmm. I feel bad that like I'm not remembering any of these points. Like, it was just for something. Like, can you think of anything specific? I I I couldn't tell you what we okay. were, what I was doing or what I was bitching about. But you were just like, <sighs> yeah, I don't, I can't remember for the life of me. I just remember <laughs> kind of getting taken aback when you're just like, no, nah, you're, you're wrong. being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean it this time. <laughs> yeah, like I think I think we were just driving, and I was bitching about something, and you're just like, kind of sounds like you were wrong, and I'm, and I was like, kind of like was just like, yo, what? <laughs> um, I'll be like, Rose, what the fuck? You're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> yeah. So, I really. <laughs> really liked seeing that scene. Um, were there any other other scenes that like that stood out to you? Um, I mean, if you're okay with me getting like super dark here, I want to talk about one. If that's okay, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, or like, I kind of had to like say excuse me when I was reading off the plot. Um, but there is a part where, um, towards the beginning, uh, Dane does, um, he decides to go hiking, um, kind of clear his head, and then he runs into this other hiker, um, and she's just like, hey, you know, like, you should come hike with me. He's just like, no, you know, I, I'd rather just do a solo. She's like, come on, you know, I, I, I could really use the company. And so, you know, they, they spend, I don't know if it's just a day or a couple days together, um, but, um... That night, she, like, comes over with dinner, and she's just like, you know, the reason why I asked you to uh, come hiking with me is because I was kind of in your sh- same shoes uh, a year ago. Um, I came out here to take my own life, um, and, um, you know, she talked about how, you know, like, uh, her uh, husband, and I think it was her uh, daughter, wasn't it, that uh, made her, like, push on? Yeah. Um. And then so like they they have a really nice discussion and then it cuts to um Dane going into the car and realizing that uh, Matt had called and it's a uh, a very sweet voicemail from Matt, Nicole and their two kids. Um 
and just I I cried the hardest probably at that point just because um you know like I would react to like same if I got like you know like a voicemail from like Caleb Brielle and Iris or you know like anyone that I loved um but just you know I'm I'm not trying to sound dark here but you know like those 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 thoughts do enter your head they have entered my head um and it sucks um I'm sorry to get dark on this episode um I'm really sorry um but apologizing just that, okay um but, <laughs> Uh, but just that scene really stuck out to me in the way that, like, after he listens uh, to that voicemail and he just he just breaks down in his car and just just finally has a good cry and just realizes that, you know, like, these people are what make uh, life worth living. And um, he needs to stick around just to make sure that this family is going to be OK. And um, it seems like that um, just... Uh, the relation uh the relationship uh between these three characters um that just make this story so incredible and um really emotional <laughs> um so yeah darkness over <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, i think s- something that i re- really liked about this is i I went into it watching it from Matt's perspective. The the guy whose wife was chronically ill. And I can really relate to that cuz my not getting into her personal stuff, but my wife, she's not chronically ill, but she's does have chronic pain. So sad, and just suffers through, through that, and so I kind of have an idea of what, what he was going through. Like a small idea, like I couldn't imagine it. What Brielle was going through, being terminal at any point. Yeah, but I knew that that's the perspective I was watching it from because he has his his kids and his wife and and I, I I had an idea that you were going to watch this from from Dane's perspective. Yeah, I did. And oh my god, that hit me like a freaking like freight train. Um, Dude, cuz it's exactly how it would be with us. <laughs> yeah, um but like Caleb said, um thankfully uh thank god Brielle is not like that and I pray that she never gets to that point. Um but we have talked about this kind of stuff and um like honestly a lot of it would play out how this movie is. Um uh just cuz you know when when you're as good of friends as you know as as close of brothers as you know Caleb and I are when it comes to and you know like especially how close me and Brielle are now as friends since I've gotten to know her um I would literally drop anything um to make sure that Caleb Brielle and uh, my niece Iris uh were going to be okay and um just do anything that I could to uh get them through a hard time yeah and it goes the other way around I would drop everything no, to come help that. Rose out I appreciate that. Thank you. But taking a very deep turn with this episode. We are <laughs> holy shit. Well, I mean, this is a this is a deep movie, man. It like, it is. We both like, said it made us ugly cry. Yeah. Like one of the I think one of the things that stood out to me was when when he when Dane and Matt were at the hospital i think this was after her diagnosis or her initial diagnosis and he or Dane was saying that he could stick around and help with the kids and and everything and i heard, like you i could see on Matt's face like the initial reaction of and it was it's something that like i i feel i would have done too like 
could almost feel him being like, no, that's okay. You don't have to do that. But you could just tell that the everything was weighing on his heart so heavily that he's just like, yeah, we'd we'd really like that. Yeah. It's like how Dane points out that in that kind of situation, no one can handle that alone. It's too much for one person. Yeah. Now I, I cannot imagine doing anything like that without without Rose. <laughs> so. Which like like we've said, hopefully we never have to, but yeah, pray. I think this movie has helped us a lot in prepping for that. If it, it ever it, does. Yeah, it it really has. Um cuz um what was it in the uh so the uh letter that Matt writes to um or the story that Matt writes to a uh, Dane, it's called he calls the friend, right? Yeah. Um I don't know if you noticed uh towards the ending what he points out. Um but he points out like the truth about someone you love dying. And he says, um, it's one man's collapse and another man's refusal to let it happen. I'm like, damn. That's some that's that some is, shit. It's true. Yeah. Oh, it ab- it absolutely is. Like, do one thing that really got me was when they when he finally called the the hospice nurse, and she goes she goes into Nicole's room and kind of sees how she she's acting, and then comes back into Dane and Matt who are just like s- sitting at the couch, and they like she asks them like how long has she been like this and he's just like oh well her diagnosis and she's like no like like this and he says oh she's been like unrecognizable for like four months and you could i think this just goes to show how good of an actor casey and jason were (laughs) which we'll get into but you could just see just how hard they were just hit with this yeah and even the the nurse was just like oh my gosh like you guys d- have been dealing with this for a really long time. Yeah, I don't think I could ever be a hospice nurse. It would be too much, too emotional. Because I, I feel, f- I mean, unfor- you know, the time that you spend with these patients is not long, but I would feel that you would get emotionally attached probably very quickly. And so having to be one of the last people to watch them take their last breath would freaking kill me. I don't even, I honestly, I don't think that's the worst part of it. What, what do you think? I I part? feel the worst part, part of being a hospice nurse like that would be with the family. Cause every, like, yeah, I think you're right. Every case would be so unique. And so, just so different and so you the hospice nurse like i feel like taking care of the the patient it would be the easy part that yeah that that is a very good point like you just need to make sure that they have their medicine and they have all this stuff that they need but you're you're not you're you're doing like your job is to take all of these physical tasks away from the family that is dealing with this grief and i think with how differently everyone like handles grief like that would be very difficult to to deal with yeah i i i can absolutely agree with you yeah but I just loved how throughout the whole movie, it was just Matt and Dane kind of becoming like partners in in this and 
like there were times where where Dane was sending Matt out to go pick stuff up from the store or telling him that he needs to like leave or like walk away from something because like Nicole was just like losing her mind they like they took her phone away because she was posting nasty things on social media and she was basically just ripping them a new ass over it yeah and you matt was getting worked up and so dane's guy kind of got in the middle and just like looks out of that human shield and told him to like back off like you need to go and then she's like yelling in his face cussing at him saying like i hate you and he's just like yeah yeah i i know i know and like he's like you hate me i'm sorry yeah that that would be that'd be so hard yeah but yeah anything else story-wise that that hits Um, you because i think we just i think we could both say that we just had a real emotional (laughs) hit with this movie yeah no we absolutely did so um yeah no i don't i don't think i really have anything else to say about the story yeah well collectively we ended up giving it a 95 which i think is well earned oh absolutely no doubt about that yeah moving on over to writing um, we're sitting at a 95.5, so just slightly higher than, than the, the overall story. I think for me, a lot of this movie, it was the stuff that wasn't said and like the way that they organized the, the script or the story to be told that really oh yeah no i absolutely agree. just excelled it and everything felt like a natural conversation like nothing feel felt like out of place or just like overly uh dramatized it didn't um i think like especially one scene that i can think of is uh when um matt goes to pick up his uh kids and it's the oldest daughter which i think is uh molly isn't molly the oldest yes Okay, um, like he goes to pick her up from school, and um, the like I, th- I forget what brings up uh her mother, but she's just like he's just like I know you hate me or something like that, and she's just like no, I hate that I'm gonna be stuck with you after she passes away, and I mean, I throughout the movie you can definitely tell that um Molly does have a closer uh relationship with her mom. Um, but just, I didn't expect, uh, Molly to blow up like that on, uh, Matt, but it made sense. Um, I can completely understand the, you know, the writing for that scene. Um, and it didn't feel like, it didn't like feel like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, I agree. One thing that I really liked about that scene in particular too is how how matt was able to say like you're not angry that i'm 15 minutes picking like 15 minutes late picking you up from school you're upset about what's going on with your mom and you're taking it out on me and then she like she yells that at him and i think this was like a a really smart way to show that he understood what was happening with her but while he was dry like while they were driving home it was just complete silence and he was like tearing up now you see you see him take off his glasses and wipe away some tears it's it's really really sad yeah because it like as much as you can say like oh i know what's happening here like i know what you're doing i know you're not really angry at me it still freaking sucks to hear shit like that. Oh yeah, no, it absolutely does. Yeah. Like you can justify it to yourself all day like, "Oh, that's just teenage angst and bitchiness coming out over something that she can't control and she's just trying to make someone hurt like she is, but 
I think in your mind you're just like shit, like that, like freaking mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> like it'd almost be like, I know you're just trying to hurt my feelings, so good job. <laughs> I didn't think we we would actually uh, laugh during this breakdown. So good job, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you kind of have to. <laughs> no, no, I absolutely agree. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's so it's. The writing in particular, it was just that. Everything felt real. Everything, like, nothing felt too much. And I feel like they could have gone that way so many times. Like, when they were at dinner with all, like, they had, like, a a flashback to where they were having dinner with, like, a bunch of friends of theirs. But Dane wasn't there because he was in New Orleans. And the friends were asking, like, oh, like have you heard about Dane? And they were just kind of like making fun of him. Like while he wasn't there being like, Oh, he's in this dead end job. still lives with his parents. Like, Oh, how could you deal with that? And like, you can say all day that you would be like, like, Oh, screw you, man. Like he's our, like our best friend, but all of them are friends at that time. Yeah. And so like, They've all, everyone says, like, the hardest people to stand up to are your friends. And That's I think they true. did a really good job being like, no, like, we loved having him. Like, he was great. Well, I, no, I absolutely agree. And I love that, um, in that scene, uh, like, for the most part, Matt stays quiet. And you can tell that, like, them saying all this shit about Dane is, like, starting to get to him to, it gets to the point where he actually just stands up and leaves. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, like, I feel like I've been in that situation a lot. Like, I feel... I was like, wait, is someone talking shit about me? I'm like... No. Well, yes and no. (laughs) Like, my... What? No, no. (laughs) Sorry. Like, with my... I hate to throw anyone under the bus, but with my family one of the things i got made like they would poke fun at a lot was our relationship like okay like going around and being like just just making like very homosexual or homophobic comments about like our relationship okay. and like how just how close we are, and just I mean I don't. To me, you were like one of the most straightest guys I've ever met. No, um, that's not that's not the point. No, no, is I that get it, they I get like they were they were using those jokes to try and offend or get a rise out of me. Yeah, and like would make and any time that I would get irritated and and just be like hey shut up like that's not funny or any comment like that they're just like oh it's just joke like you don't have to take it so seriously i hate it when people say that yeah or like oh i don't know why you're mad if you don't if it's not true like if you're getting pissed off it must be like there must be some truth like no like shut the hell up yeah like you're making fun of my friend yeah like that's what's pissing me off it's not the like you guys thinking we're in some sort of like romantic relationship <laughs> like you can think like you can think that all you want but it's just the fact that you're using that to make fun of like my best friend <laughs> yeah that's bullshit and it's almost like i like <laughs> i i never said okay. anything like i would like make comments be like that's not funny or just like to be quiet but i never got the courage to be like to bitch him out about it yeah well guys you heard it here first according to caleb's family uh we're in our romantic relationship (laughs) um we we are both gay so you heard it here first even even we didn't know 
Yeah, um, that's so. going to be awkward to tell Brielle. This is yeah. how she finds out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Imagine this is the one episode that she listens to. <laughs> <laughs> how funny would that be? That would be so freaking funny. Uh, oh, but man. it's it's just it's shit like that. Like They could have written that very differently. Made it so like big and such a big deal like he's our friend like you don't talk to him like about him like that but they didn't they keep they kept it very like collect like very real very grounded yeah, yeah. no and i i really appreciated that there really was no point in this movie that i felt okay i feel in real life no one is going to go that far out of their way to say that certain thing yeah like like that scene with the with the hiker it wasn't something that she came immediately and was just like hey i noticed this about you and it's very like alarming behavior she was like she sat there and she said like she came over and tried to make it very natural like a very natural conversation she did didn't she say she was watching him for a couple days yeah, the, they were hiking, and yeah. she's like, oh, I've seen you've been hiking here a couple of days, and just, like, concerned. <laughs> yeah, which, y- y- you know, I-, I-, I can completely understand her concern. Um, from what I've seen, um, a lot of people do, unfortunately. Um, if they do have plans to take their own life, uh, they will. That is definitely an option for them. They will go hiking alone. And they will try to find the uh, tallest uh, ledge that they can find and um, unfortunately take the plunge. So she is a remarkable person um, for um, talking to Dane when it comes to that situation. Yeah. And I think that can be tough to bring up to to a stranger. And it wasn't well, that. I mean, like, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. No, I mean, I was just going to say, like, even I feel like sometimes depression and suicide is hard to bring up to your closest friends. Um, like, um, God, this is like getting a really personal episode. Me and Caleb have talked about this kind of stuff. And, um, I, you know, I'll fully admit I was a little, uh, hesitant at the beginning, you know, talking about this kind of stuff, but you know, like once you get you know, talking about it, you, you see that they understand and, you know, they're going through s- you know, shit as well, you know, it makes you realize, you know, like, why did I wait this long to actually talk to someone, and especially my best friend? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. It's a, it's just, like, such a taboo subject when it doesn't need to be. Yeah, no, no, I absolutely agree. Like, honestly, if anyone wanted to, um, like, message me about... Uh, you, you know, depression, thoughts of suicide, please, I am open ears. I will gladly listen to anyone. This is like turning into a PSA. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hit us up on our, on our social media. This isn't just some plug. <laughs> yeah. It's just the best way for anyone to communicate or to get our contact info. Hit us up. Like, we respond to damn near everyone that messages us. Or we try to, at least. Yeah. Sometimes we don't. We don't We don't hit up those those spam uh, podcast yeah, ex- promoters. <laughs> exactly. If we know you're a real person, we will absolutely respond to you. But if you're just uh, like, oh, if you uh, do you want to grow your podcast on YouTube, this is what you can do. Yeah, we ain't going to. We ain't responding to you. Yeah. But I think... A ninety five point five is is really good. It gives it just that slight edge above the story, which was already perfection. Yeah, e- exactly. Yeah, the only thing that I feel either of those got docked for was just because maybe the story could have was it a little confusing to follow sometimes. See, yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Like, honestly, if they um like say they took out like the uh like how the actual, synopsis like, was, <laughs> yeah, like if they actually took out the words, um, oh yeah, I'd be hella confused. Like, wait, what year is this? 
Yeah. Like, if they would have put it in chronological order, I think that would have been a tad better. But I, like Not I much. said, with, with Shang-Chi, it, it is a little confusing to follow, but not so much that it's distracting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, moving on over to acting. We both actually ended up giving this a 96. Hell yeah. So, like you like you said the three the three main actors were Dakota Johnson, Casey Affleck, and Jason Segal. I always want to say Seagull, but I know it's Seagull. <laughs> I can't be the only one, right? Yeah. Honestly, the only reason that I docked at all was because of the kids. I think the kids could yeah. need, like, they just felt very. <sighs> Like almost reading a script, like very high school play. That's fair. Um, yeah, I can definitely. I, I mean, I feel we definitely got a lot more emotion uh, from Molly, but I, you can say that because she is the older sibling. Um, Evie was kind of just there in a way up until the point where they do actually tell their kids that Nicole has ovarian cancer. Yeah, dude. <sighs> After this movie, I was thinking about how how to go about telling your young children that their other that their other parent has a terminal disease. Yeah, I... and I'm like the only like he, I feel like the only way to do it is what he did. Yeah. He... You would think that, like, oh, he, you know, he was way too blunt about it, you know, just, he didn't handle it well. No, even, like, I'm not a parent, but I feel he handled it very well. Yeah, so she had, like, a list of phrases or things to avoid, like, oh, mommy's going away for a while, mommy's going on vacation. Like, the way that she said, yeah, yeah, exactly. And she was saying, we basically need to rip all hope from them <laughs> yeah like but no like, no no windows or doors like left open because if you say oh mommy's going away for a while oh where is she going where is she coming back like all these other questions but like you just need to freaking like sucker punch them with this information and he's just like we like the way that he said it, he's just like, we've been going to the doctor, the, and like, we've been getting some information from the doctor and we told you that we would let you guys know or let you in when we, when new things came up and let kind of keep you in the loop a little bit. But the doctor said, mommy's going to die. And, like, honestly, I I think he, like you said and I said, he handled it very, very well. Because, like you said, uh, the whole, oh, mommy's going away. They would ask, you know, like, oh, where? How long is she going to be? Um, and the point, like, you say, oh, she's going to be gone for this long. And then, you know, their mom's gone, unfor- passed away, like, two months. And they're just like, oh, so when's mommy coming home? Couple more months, honey. Couple more months. And... Just, I, I would never want to see a parent have to drag it on for so long that they run out of excuses and the kid gets to the point where it's like, well, why didn't you tell me when she actually did pass away to where I could have actually gotten a proper goodbye? Yeah. So, I think that that was definitely like a highlight of those girls' performance. Y- yes. So the, if saying that they were the the worst actors in this movie is not a disservice to them at all. No. Yeah, not one bit. Had I been grading them, I would have put them in the high 80s. Yeah, I can yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Yeah. So like I said, uh we gave the, the acting in 96. Um out who did you 
like at or top or your three? Um, number one, definitely Jason Segal. Um, his performance was incredible. Um, this is I think this is his best performance to date in any movie I've seen him in. Um, th- uh, then Casey Affleck. Um, he was just as good. Um, the way uh they um had such good on screen uh chemistry together. Um, you really believed that they were uh really good friends. You believed all three of them were really good friends. It never felt like oh you know like they're just pretending to be friends. No, it felt like a real friendship. Um, and then third, and this is no disservice to her because she's incredible in this film. Uh, Dakota Johnson. Agreed. Um, mine's a little different. Actually, I think mine's just like complete opposite. <laughs> oh, well. Wait, you gave Casey Affleck two? Yes. Okay, no, then not exactly opposite. Um, I've put Dakota Johnson on top. I think Definitely. I've I haven't seen a movie, seen her in a movie that I've just been enthralled by her performance like this movie well i mean the only other movie i've seen her in is 50 shades of gray <laughs> dude um, you're gonna bring that up <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i <laughs> that's the only other movie i've seen her in and you know i'll fully admit when it comes to like her acting in that movie she does the best with what she's giving given um it's not her acting that's the problem it's the writing in that movie um and this movie just proves that if she's given really good writing she can give an amazing performance yep oh my gosh she did so good in this like i <sighs> the reason i ended up giving them a 96 was because i was given her the top 100 and then number two, I was given to Jason Seagal, who I also gave like a hundred. <laughs> and then Casey Affleck, I, I dropped a couple points down to like 98. Just because I, I wasn't completely sold on his performance at the beginning, but it did so end fair. up growing on me. No, that that's completely understandable. Yeah. And then, yeah. So what ended up bringing it down to 96 was, was definitely the, the extras. I'll give I'll give Casey Affleck this though that scene where he's in the garage and that one guy uh comes in and he's just like, man, Dane's still living with you guys. Are you charging him rent? Like, what the hell? Why is he still living with you? And he's just like, dude, he's help you know he's helping around the house and you know, whatnot. And he's just like, man, dude, I I just can't believe he's still like pulling that bullshit with you. And I love how uh Matt is just like, you know what? If you still weren't dating, uh, I think it was Charlotte. If you still weren't dating Charlotte, I'd punch you right in the face right now. Because I actually like Charlotte, but I hate you. <laughs> he just said it so bluntly, but I loved it. It was, it was just perfect. Yeah. Like, ugh. Dude, I loved how they were just kind of like hinting towards... um, Like, kind of the... like. Her, Natalie losing her mind or kind of becoming psychotic. Yeah. Because they started off with taking her credit cards because she kept ordering Amazon packages of just like random shit. Uh, yeah. And then they took away her phone because she was like sending nasty messages to her Facebook friends or just like her friends in general. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that scene was freaking amazing. I'm just like, yeah, freaking, I would punch him in the throat. (laughs) As would I. Yeah. So, I think 96, well earned. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on over to character development. This one was fun, too. I... I did my character development based off of who I watched this movie from the perspective of, which was Matt. And you said you did it from Dane, right? Yes. Yeah. So we can kind of just go in, like each go into the dive of 
what who we thought like what their arc was. Okay. Yeah. Um. Who do you want to start? Um. Yeah, I'll start because I think you definitely got the better of <laughs> the two. Well, now I feel bad. <laughs> no. So yeah. So I got. I'm. I based mine off of Matt, who was the husband who was kind of dealing with with all this, and so you kind of see him start off as someone that wasn't too social, very work oriented. Um, and he kind of goes through this whole story, at least the beginning portions of it, doing that, like he's gone all the time Mm -hmm. and it's just made him very bitter, (laughs) I feel. And he's like, so he kind of takes from, with the advice from Dane, kind of takes that step back from his professional life to focus more on his personal and through that helps grow a relationship with his his daughters and his wife helps improve all of that and then kind of helps prepare the family for this already difficult time had he still been doing all of his his work stuff and being gone all the time, I don't think that the family could have survived what it went through. Oh, no, I absolutely agree. So I really liked seeing that growth, and it felt very natural and true to character. Like, there was nothing in this, like, absolutely nothing that felt out of character for him. And... One thing that really stood out is he had the opportunity, like a clear opportunity to have an affair while he was out on his, on business. And we got to see his character come into play when he turned it down. His coworker was very like insistent, like they got in an elevator together and she was just like, oh, what floor are you on? And he's like, oh, I'm on six. And she's like, I'm on four. And so she pushes the four and not the six. And so he's just like, uh... <laughs> kind of like picking up what she's putting down. Yeah. And you could see that, yes, it has been like a very long trip, but he's not the type of person to go and do that. Which really just shows how good of a guy he is I, like honestly that uh that scene i was kind of i know this would never happen in the movie but I, she's just like oh so you know i'm alone in my room when she's getting on the elevator i want him to be like bitch i'm married I'm like just show, <laughs> just flashing his ring yeah well she knew she freaking talked yeah, to his wife did. in the in the the truck oh yeah that's true yeah i was yeah. just like you bitch <laughs> she'd be like mm-hmm just pointing to the ring on his finger. Yeah. And you could see that there, he was struggling with, like, temptation. Which, things weren't super great with his wife at the time. So, oh, I yes. think that just stands... That just shows tons of character. Uh, yeah. Like, I a strong discipline. <laughs> no, I absolutely agree. Yeah, which kind of made it suck when it <laughs> when we realized that... He's the one that got cheated on. Yeah, it was it was uh, Nicole that uh, had the affair. Yeah, that yeah, that definitely took me by surprise. I'm like, what? Yeah, but I really, really enjoyed, and I think that they did it so well, just crafted this character, and it's based off of a true story. So it is, you know, like they just took what this man went through. And was able to show us like a very clear arc. And I think it worked amazingly well for this movie. So I think it was very well crafted. The issues that I have are just very minor gripes here and there. Like sometimes it just plateaus for a little too long. I feel before we see another like 
boost in his development, but no, that's fair. Overall, I think it was is pretty solid. Uh, so I ended up giving it a ninety-two. So no. Um. So I like Caleb said. Uh, we each did uh, opposite. Uh, so I uh, did the, my character development from the perspective of Dane. Um, who starts off as a uh, guy who's just working on, uh, working like backstage, uh, stage crew of, uh, some of the, uh, plays that, uh, Nicole is in. Um, and then he talks about how he wants to be a stand up comedian. Um, and then during all of this, this is when he actually, um, like really gets to know he, I mean, he already knows Nicole pretty well, but this is when he starts to get to know, uh, Matt more because, um, there's a part where uh Matt uh Nicole's like saying, Oh, you know, you should uh to Matt, you know, you should come see my play tonight and he's just like, Yeah, but I'm not gonna know anyone there and is that uh guy, um the guy that uh asked you out even though you're married, is uh is Dane gonna be there? <laughs> <laughs> um but like it's just funny that like they actually during this event they actually like sit at a table together and like <laughs> Dane actually apologizes for it and he's just like he kind of like brushes it off but then you know from then just the the friendship just grows and grows um and so it comes to the point that uh like uh Dane is uh just like working dead he's working dead end jobs um but also staying in close contact with uh, Matt and Nicole, and uh, of course uh, helping them with their daughters when he can. Um, but then once uh, the diagnosis comes in, that's when Dane really starts to step up, and you know tells Matt straight up, you know, you don't have to deal with this alone. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, to where he decides to stay, he weeks turn into months and then uh you see that that affects his like personal life because it's affecting his personal relationships um one person uh one i forget her name uh just straight up breaks up with him that he's been dating for a while because she doesn't understand why he cares so much about this family that he's willing to uh basically abandon his life uh just to help them out uh because of the situation that they're in um but thankfully, he meets a better girl. Um, yeah. Um, I but... think what's difficult for people to understand is when you do all of that to help someone that isn't blood. Yeah. Like, I think it makes sense if he was, like, going to help his brother or going to help, uh, I don't know, like, his parents or something. And kind of dropped everything to go help them. I think it would it's easier for people to swallow, but hearing that you abandon all of this stuff because of a friend, like it's almost like they don't. It's harder for people to value the relationship or the friendships yeah. than than family relationships no no i absolutely agree um i mean i of course understand where he's coming from um oh, yeah, I can me too. yeah <laughs> um but i can understand why you know like i get it how some people see it differently um but like overall it's it's uh you know like seeing uh dane uh just basically he he gives up his life just to make sure that this family is going to be okay and just just tr showcasing how, like the definition to me of a true friend, um, just making sure that this family is going to be okay, that they're going to get through this tough time, and throughout it, you see his struggles. Um, you can definitely tell that this is hitting him uh, just as hard as uh, it is Matt and uh, the two girls. Um, if I had anything to like really criticize about. It's um it's actually with uh what's his that girlfriend what's her name cat that he starts dating I think it was cat um so you know how like they start like video chatting and he's just like hey you know like I think it's gonna turn into wait okay so he says like oh I think it's gonna turn into a month or so on and so forth and she's like oh you know I understand um you know and like 
wasn't it like after that we really didn't get anything else from her? Like it was kind of that, but then isn't there a scene where he actually like does go back and like gets all of his stuff from her apartment as, or was or was that the other girl? Uh, we hear about that one. Okay, so I think, yeah. So he starts dating this this girl cat. I think cat's the one where that dumps him. Oh, okay. Because I think it starts off with Cat um, saying, oh, like, because they're video chatting, and he's, they're like, okay, how long do you think you're going to be there? And he's just like, oh, a few weeks, maybe a month at most. And then that turns into, like, months upon months. Yeah. And then that's, I think that's where she uh, kind of gets aggravated with, with him and his choices. Okay, never mind. I don't really think I have that really like bad things to say about the character development. Like, honestly, just probably like nitpicks, but it's really nothing. Yeah, well, that shows in your your score because you ended up giving it a ninety-eight. I did, yeah. Um, I think Dane had such an incredible uh, character arc throughout this movie, and um. He, he he gets um i love that he does uh get a, a happy ending towards the end like he you know gets to go home. and like it doesn't feel like he's abandoning matt at all um at least to me it doesn't um ha, ha, did you feel like it he was or no not at all like i think it's just he needed to go live his life yeah and he he knew that that Matt was going to be okay. And you could tell that Matt wasn't just saying like, yeah, we're going to like, Oh yeah, we're going to be okay. Just to say it. Like you could tell that he really put some thought into it and he's like, yeah, like we'll be, you'll, we'll be good. Yeah. And that was just kind of like the confirmation that, that he Dane needed to, to go back and kind of pick up his life. Yeah, no. No, no. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um so Yeah, overall, I uh great character development, great story arc. Um so I loved it. Yeah. Um all right, so character development averaged out to a 95. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh moving on over to effects. Um, with this movie, there wasn't anything like special effects or anything. Um, so we're just going to count like anything that was like practical. Like I, I put in, uh, Nicole's like her makeup. Yes, I, I did as well. Yeah. Any, uh, cinematography from there. Um, the biggest thing that I did was her, her makeup. Because I think throughout they were they did really good at kind of bouncing back and forth between um, different hairstyles, um, painting like showing how pale she was. Yeah. Um. The uh the whole um what they were able to do with the uh, makeup uh department when it came to uh, those kind of scenes is incredible because um getting serious again here. <laughs> Um, my mom actually uh, survived uh, stage four ovarian cancer, and so um, I actually uh, relate related a lot to uh, how I saw uh, what Nicole looked like. I remember my mom wearing those types of hats after she went through chemotherapy, um, and just uh, just watching, um, like 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 Caleb said, like the paleness. Um, they did an amazing job, and that is definitely something that you see. Um, so just, I don't know what else to say besides that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of difficult to find things to talk about with this. It is. Cinematography um, wise, it was really well done. Like, I think they, yes. One thing that they did really well is whenever they were having a serious conversation like when the doctor was talking to matt about 
the diagnosis and saying how long she has left to live when she when he was talking about everything that was going on you it was cut into like random areas of the the office yes yeah which i interpreted as him just kind of staring off into space and just kind of like hearing what the doctor has to say but not like fully grasping and then when the doctor was like how or when when matt was finally like okay how long does she have like you're saying that this was terminal how long does she have and then it focused in on the doctor which i think was just showing that he was like laser focused on that and then once he heard the timeline it was then like staring off into space and at these random things on the wall or whatever which i i loved how they did that oh yeah as did i um yeah overall yeah this and so we ended up giving it a 91.5 i don't think we have a whole lot to say about it we we don't um like everything that they do when it comes to like practical like Caleb and i already said with the, the makeup uh, when it comes to nicole was amazing uh they 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 absolutely nailed uh how um Nicole was supposed to look at that stage um so yeah which I mean if you guys want to argue with us and say that that goes into costumes freaking come at us come this at, is our yeah, show yeah. <laughs> come at, yeah come at us bro all right next up we got music which we both gave an 8 um i mean there really wasn't like anything huge that really stuck out to me. The soundtrack is incredible. Um, I actually went back and listened to it on Spotify, um, and it still hits all the emotional notes. Um, and then uh, what, what was it uh, that? What's the song that uh, Dane puts? Uh, w- tells Nicole like, "Hey, you know, like I finally found a song that like fits." Wasn't it like Led Zeppelin or something like that? Yeah, I think he said he yeah. didn't like any Led Zeppelin songs, but yeah. found one that he liked. And yeah, the soundtrack was pretty killer. I think yeah. the reason that I, the thing that kept me from giving it higher, was definitely that there wasn't anything like too. There wasn't anything like I that stood out. No, yeah, and I absolutely agree. I was the same way. Yeah, but what kept me from a seven was all of the like how the music just enhanced the scenes yes and they knew when like they masterfully knew how to use the music when not to use the music it was just well crafted Mm -hmm. oh completely agree yeah uh moving on over to costumes uh this is actually the lowest thing that we we gave it uh we ended up giving it a seven I mean, they're just wearing normal cl- uh, clothes for the, most of the movie. I mean, I guess when it's like the Halloween party, um, you could also grade it on that. But like, those weren't really any like, oh my gosh, that's like the coolest costume I've ever seen when it comes to a Halloween costume. Yeah, they were just like so. basic Halloween costumes, like really well. Yeah. They were well done. It's just oh yeah, no, absolutely not anything that stood out too much. Yeah, um, no, I agree. One thing that you kind of pointed out, the, I don't know what you call them. Is it like a headdress or like, what is that thing that, that, uh, uh, I forget Natalie's what wearing? they're called. A head wrap. Um, I guess you could say that. Yeah. Um, I think they did a really good job with those. Like no, making them seem did. fun and everything like as fun yeah, as they uh, could be cuz i i mean i i know my mom uh, had a lot of different colors of those um cuz you know like to change it up yeah uh so yeah we ended up giving that one a, a 7 which i don't think will hurt it too bad <laughs> i yeah, i don't think so either all right last up our own personal grade <laughs> 
I'll take this one first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then let like hear your thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to give it a 99. <laughs> I love it. This love is, it. yeah, there, if you guys know anything about me from previous episodes, I love movies that are experiences. I love movies that can pull a genuine reaction out of me. And or genuine feelings, and I also lo- like I said, I love experiences. Like my one of my top movies is A Quiet Place, and the reason that it's up there for me is because of the experience I had watching it in theaters. It was just the good part, though, right? Not the not the bad part. Yeah, not the <laughs> shitty ending, which you can go back to any of our Untrained Eye episodes. And- yeah, <laughs> and you hear about that. Um, yeah, it's just this was one that pulled like tr- raw emotion out of me, Be- and it was because I was able to relate to the characters so well. And this movie easily has has popped into my top ten. Dare I say, popped into my top five. It is very, very high up there. And there have not... Yeah, there haven't been a lot of movies for me that I've related so hard to a character. Plus, on top of that, made it... it Made me ugly cry. (laughs) I think the last movie to make me, like, ugly cry like that was... um, Shit, probably a fault in our stars. Wow, wow, that's like what, like six or seven years ago? It was a a while ago, <laughs> <laughs> and I watched that in th- in theaters too. And I was around people, so you know damn well that I was not emotionally ready for that movie <laughs> if I yeah, cried in front no. of people. No, he was not. <laughs> yeah, so this one I was like. Avengers Endgame made me cry. Like, it was just like, like, solitary tears. Um, this movie made me like, (laughs) like, sob. (laughs) I should laugh at your crying, but that was funny. Like, that's, that's how, dude, that's how I felt. (laughs) Like, I was totally fine. But I, I'm also a bitch when it comes to like movies like this. But yeah, as am I. <laughs> yeah. So, ninety nine. I have no regrets giving it a ninety nine. Hell yes. Um. So I was actually gonna go a ninety eight, but I'm gonna agree with Caleb. I'm gonna go for a ninety nine. <laughs> um. I yes. have no problems giving this movie that high. Um. I. I don't think I've ever related to a movie as much as I do with this one. Um, just the characters are amazing. Um, like like Caleb said, we both ugly cried. It was it's pretty it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> like I said, I took my glasses off like ten minutes into this movie because I knew I would have to keep taking them off. Oh I just had gosh. a feeling, and boy was I right, dude! It's uh, that opening scene. So. Th- it is. For those of you who decided to listen through this whole shtick, they open the movie up with with Matt and Natalie deciding that they're going to tell their kids. He goes down to get them, comes back up, and then it cuts to to Dane sitting in like their uh, uh, veranda. That was veranda. Yeah, sitting in 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 the veranda by himself, and then he hears the girls crying. That is what got. I'm like, shit. <laughs> like this movie is going to be really sad. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> anyway, I'm sorry for cutting you off. <laughs> no, dude, you're good. Don't apologize. No, dude, I absolutely agree with you. Um, just just such a wonderful film. Um. It's such a sad goddamn film. Like, oh my god, <laughs> the saddest movies I've ever seen. Um, but, but yeah, like Caleb said, if you guys like listen to this whole episode, 
I'm honestly looking at you, Vic, because um, uh, I've known from what you've told us, you even if you haven't seen it yet, you'll listen to our review first and then still go watch it. Vic, and if, if you if don't... that's the case with this one, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, this is like the one episode that I wanted to make sure that you saw the movie before you listen to this episode. So, Vic, we're ashamed of you if you wa- if you listened to this before you watched it. Um, but <laughs> anyway, like like I said, ninety nine, um, terrific movie. If you haven't watched it yet, do yourself a favor, go cry your eyes out, experience this amazing truly sad as hell story with amazing characters and a very good message on true friendship and how um certain situations will they can get you to basically drop anything and everything just to make sure that your friends are taken care of and that they're going to be okay yeah all right well that averages our personal grade out to a 99. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, so the final All Bros letter grade for Our Friend has come to an A-. minus. Woo woo! It is sitting at a 92.12%. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Um, let's see where this sits on all of our other movies. Uh, okay. So, compared to all of our other A- minus movies, Our Friend is above Logan. Wow. Which is, what is that, a 91.8%. It is above Coco. Which was at a 91.4. It is above Shang-Chi, which was at a 91.2. Damn. It was also above Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was at a 91.1. And it was above How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, which was at a solid 91. Damn. But rightfully deserved. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if we'll agree going the other direction. (laughs) Uh, So it is below Never Be Done, which was at a 92.2. I would... I don't know. Well, that was that documentary. That's true. So I'm kind of like at an impasse with that one. Yeah. Um, it was below A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which was at a 92.3. I I probably would disagree with that. But that's just the re- I think the reason we disagree with that is because our personal scores for this were higher. Usually, yeah, you're probably right. typically, whenever our personal grades are lower... Yeah. Then the like the overall percentage, we usually agree on like okay, like that makes sense. Like we agree with that number a bit more. But when our our uh, personal grades are higher than the score itself, that's when we're like, eh, that's wrong. But I think what yeah. if we were to go back, what set a beautiful day in the neighborhood up for success was the costumes and music, which in this movie were just. Lacking. That yeah, that brings a little bit. It brings movies down. No, Obviously, yeah. not a ton, but enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got a point there. Yeah, um, but let's see. It's also below Joker, which is at a ninety-two point three seven. See, I can understand that one. Yeah, same here. And then finally, it was below. Pulp Fiction, which we had at a 92.4. Yeah, still at like an impasse with that one. <laughs> Again, on, our, per- our personal scores for this were higher than Pulp Fiction. Okay, yeah. So, so it makes sense. Same predicament. <laughs> yeah. But the margins are very, very close. <laughs> like the difference between Pulp Fiction and Our Friend is 0.3 percent 
damn. Yeah, that is... Whew, that was really close. Yeah, it, like I said, the margins are tight. <laughs> like, hell, there's a bigger gap... Be- said that. Yeah, there's a bigger gap between our friend and Logan... There's a bigger gap between that betw- than there is between our friend and the top, the, let's see, the top, s- or the six movies above it. Like, the six movies wow. above it, the difference is, is 0.8%. Damn, wow. Yeah, and then with our friend and Logan, th- there's like a full percentage. <laughs> wow, Okay. All right. Yeah, so that's pretty wild. So I think an A minus is a perfect home for this movie. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. It is my turn to sign off. Wow. <laughs> I got so emotionally caught up in this film, I forgot that I was leading this episode. <laughs> Uh, If you liked what you heard and want to hear more, uh, be sure to follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Even though we switched our distributor, we should still be damn near everywhere. Um, You can also catch all of our episodes on YouTube if that is your go-to when it comes to podcasts. Um, If you want to follow us on social media um, where you can uh, DM, DM us with ideas, you can answer our questions of the week. Um, and going along with that, you can also, uh, send us a message. If you want to join us for any episodes, um, we will gladly have anyone on. So if you want to uh, check out any of those, uh, it is for Facebook is facebook.com forward slash the all bros, Twitter and Instagram at the all bros. And then if you want to email us, if, if you prefer that, it is the all bros channel at gmail.com. Com. Why is my thing not working? There we go. Um, if you want to check out our website, uh, it is tinyurl.com forward slash the all bros, um, where you, because Caleb is so cool, actually set up to where you can uh, customize some merch to where uh, you can actually get designs that have been taken down because, you know, big corporations hate, hate us like that. <laughs> um but if you don't want to do that and you want to buy a uh, design that hasn't been taken down by Warner Brothers or Disney, mostly looking about looking at you two. Yeah, little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find our store at tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash the All Bros channel. Um, so, yeah. Uh, next week, um, if all goes well... Um, actually have something special for you guys uh vic from crash and taz's movie seller and dj from the untrained eye will actually be taken over the albros for That's one supposed week. to be a secret what oh i thought it wasn't god oh. damn it can you cut that can you cut yeah that? i'll cut it <laughs> okay so okay i'm gonna okay i'm gonna start over right now is that okay, okay. All right, so uh, next week on the podcast, uh, we will be breaking down. Well, okay, if all goes well, we have a very special surprise for you guys. Um, but if that doesn't go well, which we hope it does, but if it doesn't, uh, well, it'll, I, it will go well. It's just whether or not it happens. Yeah, it, like it, we feel it's going to happen, but if it doesn't happen next week. Um, we do have a backup plan, and that backup plan is uh, breaking down uh, the new Disney film starring Emma Stone, Cruella. So if Hell you guys yeah. want to listen along with that episode, uh, be sure to uh, check out that movie on Disney+. Plus. It is now uh, free to all subscribers. Technically not free, but you just don't have to pay an extra $30 for the premiere access. Um, and it's also on a Blu-ray and 4K uh, this week, so... Go check it out on Disney Plus or just go buy it. It's completely up to you, but definitely watch that before you listen to uh, next week's episode. Um, but until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I am Jonathan. And I'm Caleb. And we will see you guys next week. So long. Deuces. <laughs>